William Francis, Diplo, and Skrillex. They're the most known DJs uh, right now in 2015-2016. They are the, they have a very unique ambience, um, ambience uh, like, and culture. This is like the EDM culture and how they like the music and genre, which is actually known is EDM stands for electronic dance music, but um, it's also known as electronic music. <laughs> uh, this, uh, the genre is really unique and has a unique sound to it. And it's really different from any other type of genre that you hear around nowadays because it's the most known there has to be a singer involved to con be considered a music genre. But uh, in 2000, I want to say 2006, they started to really come out. The DJ started to make music and grow as and became popular by 2010. And now there's three things that I want to talk to you about. like. First of all is what EDM is, and secondly, who makes the music and why they make the music, and thirdly is why is EDM music and its people considered to be like a really negative people or violence. And this one is the most known EDM festival, carnival, you guys want to call it, it's Electronic Daisy Festival. And it's the mostly known festival that happens here in California and Las Vegas. And it's coming up in April. No, wait. <laughs> May, sorry. <laughs> it's coming up this summer in May. Uh, so first of all, I will talk to you about what EDM is and why it's very unique and special and who makes it and the negativity. So first of all, ADM music is a metron it's a metrical dissonance. A metrical dissonance is a it's a sound that like metrical conflicting rhythms. Each rhythm has a sound that comes from different instruments that are combined together to make a unique sound. Most of them, um, <coughs> according to Ryan Brown in two thousand in a 2014 article published by Princeton University, there are several beats and layers combined into each beat to make a unique sound. Each sound has a really unique sound because of the instruments combined and piled together that makes a that makes a beat a metrical perception. Metrical perceptions are what's known as the different little instruments and beats that are combined all together to make a, a song. Each song has, um, each sound is very unique and has different sounds to it that makes people want to listen to them over and over again and become addicting to your ears. Secondly, I would, I'm gonna talk about, about you, I'm gonna talk to you about who makes the music and pretty much everybody knows what a DJ is, what they do and how they work. And one of the things that they, that a lot of people didn't like before is that DJs were considered to be just people that play the music of other famous people. So like, like right now, you know, you guys know that Flume, I don't know if any of you guys know Flume, but Flume has a really unique sound. Flume is one of my favorite ones, but it's one of the rarest ones that are not considered to be so much EDM because they incorporate music from other <coughs> artists, so I don't know if you guys know Lord Royals. That's one of my favorite songs. Lord makes they make um, the music like they make a uh, remixes, known as remixes, and they make so many rhythms and different versions of the same song, and that's what a DJ does. And mostly for a DJ to become or to be a DJ, they have to have a lot of creativity to make the noises and. Uh, Music sound very unique. So now that you guys know about that, let's move on to why they make it. First of all, they make it to inform, well, technically they make it for the people. The people are the ones that technically have the power to say, you're good at this, you're not good at this. And according to Daniel Rosen in a 2014 article by Intellectual Property Journal, they are, 
they need a lot of things to make this music, but it all consists around their computer. Their computer is the main part that makes them grow and makes a really unique sound. And now I will tell you a little bit about a story of a guy that is, well, he was 24, Jose, that's his name. He is a guy that is in a wheelchair. He grew, he grew up playing and everything, but at the age of 14, he, he was, the doctors told him that he was not gonna be able to walk and he lost the leg movement. So he he always he always said that he was he felt in depression. He didn't like his life pretty much. And once EDM came into his life, he started to fall in love with the music and he decided that it was a good idea to go to a rave party or a concert, as many know. And the <coughs> electronic the, the EDC, which is the Las Vegas program, that program, well, the festival is really known for its craziness and colorful and nakedness, too. Yeah. <laughs> um, so he decided to go to see what it was all about because he really liked the music and he wanted to see live DJs. So when he went, he found out that he really liked the type of music. So he said that he started dancing on his wheelchair. He was dancing in his ass off. Not really, but um, <laughs> he really tried to have fun. And people around him started to notice that he was dancing on his wheelchair and they really liked the, his attitude towards the music. So at the end of the night, he ended up crowd surfing the whole, the whole night away and everyone just loved him. And he says that for him, that experience is something that he will never forget that he really likes when he, when he goes to these parties. And ever since then, so he goes to parties all the time, uh, the rave parties especially. And um, he says that, he even goes to say that he feels more at home with them than he does in his own house, which is saying a lot considering you live with family members who care and love you. But um, now that I talked to you about that, I will talk to you a little bit about the negative, um, the negative point of view that many people have. And the first thing you think about is EDM, and you think about sex, drugs, and pretty much drugs. <laughs> and not gonna lie, it is true. A lot of people do use drugs when they are at these parties or rape parties because um, it's a way to enhance their mood in this scene. And 50% of the population that go to these parties will do some type of drug. 50%, that is a lot of people. That is a lot of people. But then there's the other 50% that don't really do drugs. <laughs> According to Daniel Alfre in a 2014 article by Indiana State University, and really, this is um, there's a drug mostly used there, which is called um, nitrous oxide. They really do not. It's a it's a drug that a lot of people use. And I don't know if you guys remember in 2013 there was a there used to be the EDC program that is in Las Vegas it used to be here in Los Angeles, but they kicked them out and they don't let them do them here anymore because of the drug overdose of a girl. I don't know if you guys ever heard about that. But it was a while ago. So now that you guys know more about EDM and its music and pretty much the point of view, uh, let's wrap things up. And today, you guys learn about why music is so unique and important to pretty much people who listen to it and are really passionate about. And the three points that I talked to you about is what is EDM, who makes them, who makes this music, and why they make it. And finally, why so many people view it very negatively. And I would like to end with a quote that says, the key to life is dancing the night of your way through it, so just enjoy it and have fun. Thank you.